lie? Do we understand how convoluted this stuff gets? But how it does make sense. It's paradoxical, yes. But God makes sense. God always makes sense. God is always logical. And God is not to be blamed for anything bad. Only good. That's all he wants for his kids. This is what's logical. This is what's reasonable. This is what makes sense. That you learned how to be a good parent from God. That's how we all learned. It's an instinct he gave us and we chose to gravitate toward. To holiness instead of, of unrighteousness and evil. Okay, we want to be good people. We want to be like God. So always thank God at the end of the day for anything good within us and for, for everything. Every sin we're committing today that we may commit, that we'll commit in the future, it can all be forgiven except for the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, that you cannot lie. If you sin, you must confess your sin, and he's quick to forgive. Admit it. Admit it. Admit you fell short. You were weak. You fell. But you thank God for enjoying it. You say, thank you, God, for this pleasure food that, you know, that I've derived joy from. This escapist behavior, it all came from you. You gave me the wherewithal to enjoy this thing, to find pleasure and joy in this thing. Even though it's empty and vapid, and it's escapist behavior. Still, Father, you're in the mix. God is in the mix. It's a beautiful thing. But don't commit the unforgivable sin. I mean, why would I ever tell anybody to do that? And the thing about sin is, is by God saying, by permitting it, it's taking away the taboo. Don't taste, don't touch. And this idea that we're going to live by the law. This is, this is the criticism Jesus made of the Ten Commandments. That it's just too hard. You can't even barely remember them all. But if you gravitate toward the spirit of the law and just say, look, I'm going to live by the spirit of the law, not by the word, not by the letter of the law, okay? The legalism, the legalistic, religious aspect of it. No, you don't want to live by that. You need to live by God's grace because we're all going to miss the mark if we don't. If we don't depend on His mercy, his amazing grace, his forgiveness, his compassion, his empathy for us, then we're all sunk. So that's why we need to understand these things about the sin and the forgiveness and the blood of Jesus and how, you know, this grace reaches to the heavens. There's no limit to his amazing grace. But the fact that he takes the taboo away, he takes the death away. Essentially, that's what it is. The ultimate sin is the death. That's the evidence that we have all sinners it fell short of the glory of God is because death came into the world. And the ultimate plan is that death is going to be swallowed up in victory. We're all going to be set free. So it's a beautiful thing. He's got a plan in place for all those that hunger and thirst for righteousness that are ready to lay all their cards on the table and say, God, I want your will to be done. Show me where I'm not ready so you can ready me and I can be ready for that world of tomorrow, for that new age Jesus spoke of because sooner or later, one way or another, I know it's coming and it keeps getting closer and closer like sands in an hourglass. That day is coming and it's, it's, it's coming faster and faster and faster and that's a beautiful thing for the righteous out there. But I've got to warn the unrighteous. I've got to be one of those watchmen on the tower, God. Because otherwise, the blood of those people that are lost to hell is going to be on my hands. That's why I do what I do. That's it. I mean, that is the Spirit of God touching me in my heart, my mind, my spirit, my soul, in my life, and speaking out my mouth. That's the best I can do for humanity. That's it, man. That's it. And you could call me phony because I fail here and there and I'm weak here and there and all this. I say, well, I'm only human. And in my weakness, God's strength is perfected. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, I enjoy looking at beautiful women who created the women. It's a work of art. They're perfectly matched for me as a man. It's awesome. That is God. God is male and female. The woman is God. The man is God. We're gods. We're children of God. This is awesome. So yes, I, 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 I'm weak here and there, and I, I, you know, and I admit it, and I know everybody else out there has their weaknesses, but God uses it for His purposes. He uses everything for our purposes. Those that humble themselves shall be exalted, and those that exalt themselves will be humbled, as it is written. Got to hurry up and go through it now. Boy, time sure goes fast when I'm serving God, you know, and that's what I feel like I'm doing when I'm serving humanity, man. I'd pay for this privilege, and I do a little bit. I don't mind. I like it like this, and I don't resent anybody that gets paid for speaking. I'm all fine with it. I want the best for everybody, man. I'll set you free. 
If Jesus was running this world, it'd be the same as if I was running this world. It'd be you'd be free. You'd be born with your shares in this planet. We'd split seven billion dollars. I mean, seven uh, the net worth of this planet by seven billion people. Okay, that's it. A level playing field from birth. That's it. We serve one another at will because we were made to serve. We have a conscience. We have an instinct. We have God-given talents that we want to exert and utilize, okay? They make us pay for the privilege of cutting our own throats. Yeah, that's kind of the way it works. Yeah. Yeah, they make us pay the taxes that uh, just make it worse. Like, you know, we got to fund the FBI who just, you know, preserves the welfare of the Federal Reserve when we'd be all a hell of a lot better if these people went down the tubes because they're reckless lending, reckless money printing, wouldn't we? Matter of fact, so they make us pay to cut our own throats. All the capital of the world is useless, utterly valueless without workers, without labor. If it's perfectly okay for your kids to inherit your wealth, isn't it perfectly okay that God's kids inherit his wealth? Yeah, well, ask yourself, why or why not? The heart of the beast, extreme poverty to the point of death. How true it is. The best American I know is a Palestinian guy. Yeah, I mean, you've never met someone that loves the American way more than some of these Muslims, believe me. Believe me, it, it's true. We do take that for granted. That, so Alex Jones is right about that, that we've become kind of spoiled in that sense, that enjoying, we, we should have been far less tolerant. All of us should have been far more outspoken about all this reckless lending, the destruction of our currency through in raising our cost of living to the heavens. I mean, it's just, it's in our face. This is taxes. The cost of living is a tax. Let's be very clear what's happened here. You know, Muslims know this money lending. They don't tolerate this usury crap. I mean, they're tolerating this country because they don't have a right to impose their laws. But this is why the banksters fund these wars. They hate these people because they don't go in debt. They hate debt. They'd sooner just give away houses than to put themselves in debt, which they're right to do. We should be doing it. It'd be a hell of a lot cheaper to solve our problems and to maintain them like we're doing. Gosh, why can't we figure this stuff out, man? I, 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 I'm kind of ashamed, to, you know, of, of what's happened in America. You know, I love America. I love American people. I just love people. But we've got to just, you know, pick ourselves up by our bootstraps, man, and get it together and speak out in unison against the evils and be focused. Know who's called these highfalutin politicians illegitimately legitimizing the theft of the wealth of our nations in concert and collusion and cahoots with the Federal Reservists, the money printing class, the infinite heirs. If it is, a, it is a sin to even be cognizant of the fact that we know when we are naked. I pointed that out. Option to serving your fellow man, being a self-serving, lazy pissant. But you choose. Let's sue the money printers and their highfalutin political cohorts for the national debt. The higher your cost of living, that is taxes included, equals more worth of your currency and adds up to greater enslavement. I wrote a mathematical uh, equation here. Uh, I don't have time to go into right now. I wonder how many lives were saved by revealing to the world that the events of 9-11 were deceptively reported. That's right. People need to be taken out of Babylon, out of ignorance, out of confusion. Talk to over 2,200 architects and engineers. Don't ask me. Don't ask Alex Jones. Talk to them about the preposterous nature of the official story of the events of 9-11 could not have happened that way boom end of story maximum freedom is attained by way of the lowest cost of living the lowest taxes believing in inequality even just a little opens a pandora's box unto all hell knowledge of evil makes us sinful a longing for pureness of heart makes us holy sound currency through sound monetary policy is the only way to extricate ourselves from ever-growing economic miseries. If you ever wonder, if you've ever wondered how rabid communism is created, wonder no more. Two words: crony capitalism. Why sound economic policy is an existential threat to Satan. Those to whom have been forgiven most will love the most. Jesus Christ, like our sins forgiven. 
How many people really understand the existential threat in tolerating ever-regressing economic reality? Oh, reality.